Now, every year, British military medical personnel go to Denmark to practice battlefield surgery. The whole process, carrying bodies, treatment in the field, surgery itself. They need to practice. It's a, a useful exercise. But they practice on live pigs. The operation used to be called Operation Danish Bacon. Needless to say, it is controversial to use animals which are all put down at the end of the exercise. The animal rights group PETA has called for an end to the practice. Well, Louis Lillywhite is a former Surgeon General for the British Armed Services and joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Evan. Um, as I understand, the essential criticism is why do you need to practice on live pigs? Well, uh, the first point to make is that I think the Daily Mail article has a kernel of truth in that practicing uh, advanced surgical techniques, you don't need live animals. And indeed, the Royal College of Surgeons of London is used as a base for training both military surgeons and civilian surgeons who have to deal with issues such as 11, uh, 7 7. Uh, and they use a mixture of dead bodies that have been donated for the purpose of medical education plus advanced technology. So there is a desire to use um, non-live animals whenever that is possible, and that is done for the more sophisticated end of the uh, surgical right. training. So what, what is the point then of flying off to Denmark to, 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 to use mm. Danish pigs? Um, you're probably aware that the recent conflict, we've achieved probably the biggest reduction um, in uh, death rates um, in, 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 in anyone's living memory. And that has been done in large part by the care that is given in advance of the uh, surgical teams. So at the very point of wounding, at the uh, transport to the regimental A post, from there to the forward surgical teams. And that is where um, the anaesthetised pigs come in. The pigs are anaesthetised by veterinary surgeons before uh, they have wounds inflicted on them that are similar to those you find in battle. And then non-medics uh, provide first aid. They are then transported to medics uh, on stretchers with the accompanying vet. They are given their initial treatment uh, by the battalion or regimental aid post and they're transported to forward surgery. Now, that at the moment, I don't think can be simulated uh, in a realistic way. Does any, any other army practice in this way? Is this normal? I mean, do NATO, NATO allies, do they, do, do they engage in this kind of uh, exercise? Um, at the moment in, in, in Europe, it is primarily the, the, um, uh, the Danes who put it on and it is a Danish exercise four Danish uh, soldiers and, and, and surgeons, and we, the British, and a number of other NATO uh, countries go along and join in their exercise. Uh, there are other exercises in the United States as well, and I believe a number of other countries do so, um, um, al although lesser and lesser uh, as time goes on. And am I right in thinking the reason that you fly to Denmark to do this is because it's easier to do this in Denmark than it would be in the UK? Not entirely true. You are probably aware that uh, the uh, participation of the UK was stopped in 1998 for a couple of years, whilst the government of the day um, uh, had an independent external review that included civilian doctors, vets, um, ethicists and indeed uh, religious to look at the uh, probity and necessity of such training. And that um, uh, that body reported back and not only did it recommend that we should continue or should re reinstate the training in uh, Denmark but we should start it here in the UK. However the government and the military at the time decided that uh, in the interest of reducing the number of, um, uh, of, of pigs that were anaesthetized and then killed uh, it would be more efficient and, and more humane to continue to join in with the uh, with the Danish exercise. So it, it, it's as much in the interest of reducing the number of pigs that you use for training that we go to Denmark. Louis Lillewhite, thank you very much.